guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodah. Welcome back to my channel. So I am here now on the home stretch. Yay! <laughs> this has been a bit of a labour of love, I have to say. Um, this glue book folio, but I've really enjoyed it. But yep, I think I've mentioned before, I would definitely not tackle one this size again. Um, by that, I mean this was a five by seven envelope, which I personally found pretty small to work with in the glue book style. Um, and the other problem that I also encountered, which I hadn't kind of factored in, was the style of book that I was using um, predominantly for my, you know, my glue book pages, which was one of those ladybird books, which the entire page has got the most beautiful illustra <clears throat> illustrations, which then obviously makes it very hard to cut them down and, you know, adapt for your glue book. So a little kind of tip there, if you were making one, um, you know, or certainly if I was making, you know, when I make my next glue book, I will probably steer clear of these kinds of um, books with the full page images because it made it very, very difficult to use. Um, anyway, if you have been following along, you'll know that we now um, just have our front and back left to do of the folio. I have been busy making lots of ephemera and things to put in it. So... I'm hoping that it's nearly done. Um, obviously, I haven't tried actually stuffing all my ephemera in, so I may have a horrible shock and discover there's more yet to do. Um, but I hope that I'm now on the home stretch anyway. So I've just printed one of the collage pages, or the collage page from the Glue Book Favourites, and I'm going to have that on the cover. And I'm also going to have that on the back cover. I did print it twice, although now I... Oh, yep. Oops. Well, that's that's in uh, better days, hasn't it? Yep, I've creased that up. Um, but yeah, hopefully that's going to still be fine to use. So I'm going to use this for the front and the back. I absolutely love this collage page. It's so full of just bright, colourful oh, yumminess, to be honest. Um, so now I just need to decide how I want to have it on the cover. <clears throat> I mean, I'm probably not going to have an awful lot else on the cover. Obviously, in this folio, I have not added lace or anything like that anywhere, which, mm, you know, that's kind of like unusual for me. And, you know, maybe I will kind of look back through and think, oh, well, perhaps I should have added some lace. I mean, let's just pull some in and see. I don't necessarily think that this needs lace, to be honest. Um, and I think it would maybe change the feel of the glue book. Although, having said that, that looks quite pretty there. Um, so I'm, yeah, going to, I think, try and do the cover without, without lace. Now that probably is going to be a struggle for me, um, but we'll see how we get on. So let's decide what section of this we're going to want on the cover. So, I mean, we could have it kind of here. So this soldier here is then the main focal point. We could have it there and then the smaller soldier, the main focal point, we could have it with the boot as the main focal point. I didn't bother cutting this borderless because I knew that it was going to be being cut down, you know, for the cover anyway. And obviously I knew that this wasn't full A4 size. So, you know, it didn't need to be printed borderless. So I just need to, yeah, decide which section of this I think is going to be best for the cover. I'm kind of swaying towards this, um, this soldier here. My only doubt is obviously that this soldier's face would just be kind of coming into the equation, which is that strange. Or we'd have to have him, which uh, I don't dislike him either, to be honest. Uh, let me pull him down. I mean, I guess it depends what else we're going to have on there. So let's just see what else are we going to have on there. I've got some acetate. Sorry, I was just having a sip of my tea. I've been filming kind of back to back this morning, so I'm a little bit thirsty. And I've got these stamped labels, which again, you know, just love this craft colour card. So, you know, might might be able to use a section of that somewhere. <sighs> Let's have a look. So, I mean, if we had that and we could have something like, you know, a strawberry or something on the corner. I had decoupage some napkin on here. Personally, I don't then think that really goes very well with the rest of the paper and the look here so I would probably choose to cover that up but that you know that's just me I think so um hmm. let me just see if I have this smaller man where we'd have the label then 
Mm, it's probably a little bit weird. So I'm going to go with the big one, I think. So all I'm going to do is cut him around. And again, I'm not going to take him right up to the edges. I want to have a little bit of a gap, I think, showing a bit of that craft colour. So I'm just kind of folding my paper up so I know roughly, roughly where to take it down. So like that. Okay, so I'm just going to cut around there using those folds as a bit of a guide. Oops. I think I've made a horrible job of this, haven't I? But never mind. So I hope everyone's having a good day. I hope you're doing some crafting. Every day is better with crafting, isn't it? The sun is shining here today. It's really nice. It's um, it's one of the oh, look, I've just now torn the paper. It's one of those lovely days that, that's just kind of perfect temperature. It's um, I think it's about twenty four or 20, 21, 21, 24. Which, again, I'm not quite sure what that would be in the other one, but maybe like 68? I don't know. Maybe something like that. But it's, it's pleasantly warm. It's not that kind of oppressive heat where you literally can't breathe and you kind of ugh, can't get out of it quick enough. It's just perfect today. Um, you know, I've got bare, bare sleeves today, taking my cardigan off, but, you know, just lovely. Okay, there we go. Probably still a bit wide actually, but we get in there now. Oh my gosh, what a horrible job I've made of cutting that down. Let's just cut that in a bit further. Hmm, let's hope I've done a bit better job there now. Not brilliant, but not too, too bad. So yeah, I'm going to cover it like that, I think. I mean, to me, that just looks scrumptious, just exactly as it is. Let me just quickly have a drink. Okay, so I'm going to stick this down in the first instance. Oh, are you kidding me? I, again, I have cleaned all my nozzle and everything and I tested it just before the video. It was all fine. And then honestly, you flick the camera on and it's like, no, I'm not going to work for you now. And that's just so typical, isn't it? I think I've spent more time unclogging my glue during this whole glue book, lap book thing than I have actually gluing things down. So very, very annoying. Okay. Oh, come on. Okie dokie, right. So I've been super busy trying to, um, you know, organize a little bit um, through my tidy Fridays that I'm kind of, you know, feeling spurred on to get myself organized. Um, I don't know really whether you, you guys would notice any difference because actually I now look behind my desk and I'm like, oh, who am I kidding? It just looks appalling still, but I mean, I'm hoping that there is a little bit of progress, but maybe it's just so tiny we can't see it. I'm not sure, but I do think sometimes you have to go through the mess, you know, to get to it looking any better. That's what I'm telling myself anyway. So, um, yeah, maybe I will suddenly notice this amazing transformation. I have my doubts, but, but hey, as we keep saying, just tiny steps and, you know, eventually we'll get there. I mean, as I say, a lot of it for me is just because I'm such a hoarder and I just constantly look at things and think, oh, well, I, I may use that, you know, I may want that. And the thing is with crafting, because there's so many clever ladies out there, it is genuinely the type of thing that you could get rid of things and then the next video you watch somebody's com you know converting or transforming that exact same thing that you've just got rid of so you know it is a, a genuine sort of concern because you might just get rid of the one thing that somebody comes up with this amazing transformation on and you know you've just then got rid of it so um yeah, I, you know, 
That's my excuse anyway. I do think it's a genuine, genuine worry. Right, going to have that on there. Now, let me get rid of that word now. Let's have some other bits on here to obviously kind of make that stand out as well. So, got some of my numbers and got a number two. I mean, they're kind of quite nice and striking on there, aren't they? Let me just quickly finish my tea. Oh, that's so nice. So refreshing and so, so needed, that was. Okay. Well, I quite like that. Now, oh, we talked about having this label, didn't we? So, let's just have a look. See, I just completely forgot even what we'd just looked at. Let's just have a look. I mean we could have something like that. What do you think? I'm kind of wanting something a bit more standouty. Um what what type of thing might be good? I've still got this little Kayser Craft piece, which we didn't use in the end. Because I'm thinking maybe it needs something, something along the black lines, because that's just really then, you know, has a really big impact, doesn't it, when you use the black stuff. Mm. Not sure that's impactful enough. It's, um, yeah, kind of like not really, not really doing it for me. Not sure quite why um let me just have a look so i've still got those kaiser craft pieces and i'm just going to see if there's anything else like black and striking or anything else i guess that could be could be used in here so it's got a few of these words with the you know uh what are they called typewriter style letters um Nope, 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 nope. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it? I have got the word love um, still in there, actually. Let me just pull that one out. Oh, I was just saying how lovely the weather was and suddenly it's got really hot in here. Must be where I've just kind of switched the last of my tea. I'm now really boiling. I might have to um, get up and open the window in a moment. Try and have the windows closed as much as I can because of the traffic noise. You know, I know I've said this loads of times before, but we're on quite a busy road, and um, you know, so I don't want to obviously just drown the noise or drown, you know, drown every everything out on the video. Right. Well, I quite like the word love. I think that's quite nice. Um, yeah, I think that does look quite nice. Now, ordinarily, I would ink this to get rid of the white around the edges. Um, I mean, a lot of things that you buy have that kiss cut kind of look. And weirdly, I don't mind it when I buy things. If I try and kiss cut things, they often look sort of strange to me. Um, but I might leave them white because we've got the white there in his trousers and things like that. And actually, I think on this particular piece, it's making it stand out. And if I actually inked that up, I think it would just blend straight into the background and not really stand out, you know, at all. So I think, yeah, it's probably best to actually leave that kind of, you know, um, white so it's actually got a bit of impact there. Now I'm just having a look to see if we want anything else. Wondering whether, you know, like where anywhere we've got something, whether we could kind of like foam, foam dot it, you know, foam attach it so it's got a bit more impact or something. Uh, I mean, a shoe would be good. Now, can I find a shoe? Of course, that's the one thing I can't spot. Got that one. I don't know whether... Oh, here we go. I've got one cut out here. I don't know whether that's the right size, but... Ah, pretty good size, that is. Yeah. So, I'm thinking we will, like, glossy accent a couple of things so that they're just, you know, standing out from the rest of the things on the cover. So... Which things? 
I think we're going to glossy accent the shoe and the love because I don't want to glossy accent obviously everything because then of course it's not going to stand out at all it would all just be the same but I don't just want one thing gloss glossy accented so let's do these two now I'm going to have problems with my glossy accents because I know that I do always have problems with this so I'm just going to again just unclog that okay so I'm just going to go all the way over that with a nice big thick coating okay and just then spread that out I just use my finger which is not great actually because the glossy accents leaves a sort of weird feel on your finger then um, it kind of leaves like a bit of a film bit of a film on your finger but but I don't mind really but yeah I'm just meaning I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> recommend this as the method for putting it on but it's the method I seem to use the most. There we go, so that's the love. Then we're going to do the shoe. Again, I'm not inking the shoe up because for the same reason, anywhere where it's got that slight white edge, I think, oh, I think will be quite nice for making it just stand out a bit more. So again, just ink that up. Uh, not ink it up, sorry, glass, glossy accent. Oh, I can't speak. Ah. Okay, right, let me put these right out of my way before I actually then tread on them or, you know, touch them in any way because I do do that quite frequently when I use glossy accents. I forget it's still drying and then end up dipping my finger in it or putting something on top of it or something. So I'm just going to put them literally out of the way to dry. So I will come back, obviously, to the front so let's just turn it over. Now, for me, the back just feels like the back should be plain, um, to be perfectly honest. I just tend to kind of do often the back's plain. I know that lots of people do decorate the backs, and, you know, I do love that, but I don't know why. My brain just always says, oh, it's, you know, it's the back, it should be plain. So, yeah, I'm going to just do plain, I think, on the back. So let's just, again, do that with a bit of a bit of an edge around it. So... And just kind of chop that round like that and then we'll just bring that over like that so we know roughly roughly where to cut it <clears throat> okay right so I'm going to just trim that down here oh my gosh what's my what am I doing? I have the wipe just completely stuck all over the scissors. Right, so I need to just refold that, I think. So there we go. It wasn't looking very straight. It might not be very straight now either, but we'll soon find out. Okay, in there. And then we're going to just go along this one. like that okay move that out of the way and then obviously I need to just take that white border off where I didn't cut it borderless okay so yeah I don't think I did a very good job of this edge either so let me just bring that down a bit okay and trim that across there okie dokie Take that down. Whoops. And then hopefully, yeah, that just about kind of fits on there. I might have to just take it down fractionally, actually, at either the top or the bottom. So just take it down a bit more at the bottom, I think. Yeah, so let me know below if you've done one of these um, glue book folios. How's yours turned out? You know, have you finished it ages ago? Possibly you have. Um, and did you have fun doing it? What size did you make yours? What what book did you use for yours? Have you used, um, you know, children's books? Did you use like a combination of other things as well? You know, what what type of thing did you come up with? And how did you find it? Did you find it you know like I did a bit of a struggle and a bit of a tall order 
um, or actually did you, you know, did you get on okay? I mean, definitely I found this way harder than when I did my glue book journal. Um, I think, I, de I definitely, for me, I think was definitely because of the book that I used, um, you know, for the sort of children's book images. They just were too big. Well, not too big, but they were too full, you know, that it then made it very, very difficult to... Sorry, I just swapped my glue there. Um, it just made it very difficult to actually then cut the image down because I didn't want to lose the entire gorgeousness that was on the page. So definitely, you know, next time I do a glue book of any kind, be that a lap book or, you know, folio or just a glue book journal or anything else, I'm going to definitely stick with, you know, books that have more illustrations just, you know, placed around rather than entire page full illustrations because that was just way 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 too tough I thought <coughs> excuse me I really got um a terrible frog today well I think it is just dry throat from over talking I, I um I wasn't cho choking on coughing earlier so uh, yeah probably need to go and have a huge glass of water or something and wet my whistle as they say so that's the back I guess what I could do because we haven't added any of those vintage ads and we've also been using those quite a bit haven't we so I'm just going to see whether any of those would be quite nice on the back somewhere let's just have a look uh, I wonder if I could just cut this lady out. She's really nice. Thing is, she's so nice, I don't really, really want to cut her up and muck her up. But if I cut her without, I don't know whether that's an umbrella she's got up there or what that is, but she may just blend straight into the page. That's the only concern there, but let's give it a try. So I'll just cut her out there. Okey-dokey. Okay. Okey-dokey, and then we'll just trim around here. Okay. Oops that bit. I don't know what some of these details are to be honest you can't really tell whether they're kind of like part of her dress or you know some lace or something or whether there's something behind her but anyway they've either been chopped off or left on depending on you know interpretation really. So she may be quite nice I think somewhere here. Where? Where would we like her? Do we want her? Let's just have her over there I think. I think she'd be really nice there. And then should we have one more thing kind of on there? Let's just have a look and see what else we've got. Mm. Well, we're going to have the shoe on the front actually, aren't we? Yeah, I just forgot that. Just forgot that for a moment. So I have got this house. Oh, that's quite cool, isn't it? Yeah, I think I'm going to put that there. Okay, so let's just pop this down like that. Okay. I'm almost wondering whether we could um, find a, you know, the end kind of thing to put on here. I don't know. The thing is, with a lap book, you don't know how someone's going to kind of open it. And obviously then if they open it in a different way, the end is a little bit strange and irrelevant, I guess, isn't it? So, yeah, maybe that would be a bit bit pointless on a lap book. Maybe it would work better, you know, having the end on a journal or something. I wonder if I picked up the wrong glue again. Did I? Did I pick up the wrong glue? Or has this one now decided to start playing up? Hmm, it's hard to say now. 
just go for the other one. Oh, perhaps I just picked up the wrong one. Okay. Right. Oh my gosh, she's super fiddly. Probably not helped because I've got her on that highly patterned paper and can't really see where she begins and where she ends. But then if I put her on the black craft mat, I'm not really going to be able to see her on that either, am I? Okay. Just pop that down like that. Okay, that looks really nice, doesn't it? What about a little number or something? Maybe over there. I don't believe it. Have I just picked up the other glue again? Oh, honestly. So we have that there. Again, just dab that off. Like that. Okay, and do we want anything else? Oh, hold on, I've got my I've got my fairy tale words here where it says and they lived happily ever after. It may be that this will look really strange because it's not really the right font, you know, for this. Um And they lived happily ever after. You see, I really like that sentiment at the end of a journal and other things because I think that's just a really nice way to end it with that kind of fairy tale esque sentiment. Um, it just feels happy and nice and, you know, cheerful way to end things, doesn't it? I wonder if we could have it that way. That's probably a bit strange, but. Just see. Should we have it there? <clears throat> Obviously, this is printed on ivory, and I'm thinking it maybe would have looked better printed on white, but this is just what happens to be in my in my container. So um yeah, I'm going to just go for it anyway because uh otherwise I'll be here all day if I'm then mucking about going and printing off another one. So just going to go for it and let me just see whether whether I want to have any of the smaller blue book pieces around. I mean, I just said, didn't I? I, I don't tend to decorate the backs. And now what am I doing? I'm just sat here decorating the back. Do you know why? I'm really just doing it because that um, glossy accents is drying. So I'm kind of waiting for that to dry, which, yeah. That's quite nice. Yeah, I quite like it like that. So let's glue that down. Okay. There we go. And I want to keep everything quite flat on the back because of course we don't want to have kind of lumpy lumpy bumpy effect on the back of here you know because then it's not going to kind of lay nice and flat really so yeah I think kind of it's better that you know less is more in terms of what's going to bulk it out okay so we're just going to put the rosebud on like that again just dab that off with the wipe. Okay. Well, that looks really nice, doesn't it? And then we'll just turn it back over. I doubt very much that my glossy accents is dry. Let me just have a look. Well, it's getting there. It is getting there. So yeah, I may have to come back when that is dry and just finish this off. So in fact, I think what we'll do is let's start stuffing this while we wait. So I'm pulling in all the bits that I've made in terms of ephemera for this. And obviously I've made some with you guys and some without. <clears throat> so I made this little junky journal, which is super cute. We've got a little flippy flappy part. We've got a little tuck spot and things. 
And then we also made this gorgeous little file folder that we're going to just paper clip into the back. So you just grab a paper clip here. Oops. And again, I'm not doing an altered paper clip or anything like that because, um, you know, I don't want to bulk this out more than I have to. So just a plain, plain paper clip there, just holding that on. And that's going to hopefully go in this envelope kind of flap there. Then tucked in here, I've already put in this journaling card, which actually I'm now looking at and thinking, oh, we had nothing on the back of here. So let's just quickly put something on the back of there. So perhaps we'll have, <clears throat> perhaps we'll just have a little bit of maybe numbers and a rosebud or something, just because, you know, it's boring, isn't it, to have it with nothing at all. I'd forgotten, obviously, that that was bare on the back. Okay, so that's going to go just in there like that. And then we'll just put the rosebud on as well. Okay. Okie dokie. Right, so that's that journaling card in there. That's quite nice. Oops, like that. And then we open it out. And then we've got another pocket in here. So in here we're going to have, what shall we have? Because I've also got um, on, or not on the back, sorry, at the top. Where is it? Aha, uh -huh, here. I can remember how it was kind of put together for a minute. Okay, so on the top here, we've also got another big pocket. So I'm going to just put, hopefully this if it fits, but if not, I'll have to pick something slimmer. So we'll just see. Obviously I haven't tried any of these bits of ephemera, so it's a bit, a bit of a gamble what's going to fit where, but oops. It was going well, it was going well, and then suddenly, suddenly it wasn't, so. I don't know what it got caught on, but, oh gosh, let's try it again. Oh, come on, come on. <laughs> come on. Okay, does that go in? No, nope. it's getting caught on something. So, yeah, I'm not going to force it because um, I might end up damaging the piece. But what I have got is I've got a smaller piece, skinnier, that we can hopefully pop in there instead. So let's just slot that in instead. You know I'm wondering whether actually that's as far as it goes because obviously we glued it at the bottom hmm I'm wondering if that's as, as long as it is or as tall as it is which that's a bit of a shame and I haven't obviously factored that in so right this is a shorter much shorter one so let's just see whether this goes in there Yeah, I probably should have actually measured some of these bits, but as you know, I don't measure and then sometimes that just kind of proves to be a mistake. I don't know what that's getting stuck on unless it is just where it's glued, but it's not going down very far, that's for sure. Let me just, let me just have a look in here. Uh -huh. Right, it's not glue, it's the envelope flap. Okay, so that's fine. I just kind of thought, well, that's really strange why it's not going in. It's getting caught on the envelope flap. So that's fine now. Now I've seen what it is, that does now fit in there. Okay, right, so that's that piece. Uh, okay, open this back out. So in here we can put in, if this fits, again, it's hit and miss whether it does okay that fits beautifully so that's great and then we've got some journaling cards we can just put a couple in here and we've got another little pocket up here so we can put that in and oh actually I think we did this as a pocket as well so we could have this little flippy out 
in there. Then this one in here, oops, like that. And then I don't think he's going to fit in there either. But we've got a little pad we could put in there. Then we close that. Okay. And then in here we've just got a couple of tags. And what else have we got? Okay. Okay, so what we might do is have a couple of these bits into this envelope, which again, so they go in there. Will that fit in there as well? Oh, come on. Come on, come on. Yeah, it just about goes in. Now, will it still close? That's the question. No. Well, it does close, but only just. Can you see that? It's kind of curved quite a lot now, which that's a shame. Let me just see. Yeah. Well, it's not too bad, actually. Um, I think I had this piece tuck, you know, overhanging slightly, which obviously was making it have to curve slightly more than it needs to otherwise. Um, I mean, it is curving a little bit because obviously it is quite stuffed, but, you know, it's not too, too bad. And then here I've just got this envelope, which we can pop these couple of things into the envelope so there we go and we can just have the envelope kind of either you know just tucked in or however really let me see now whether the glossy accented pieces are now done hold on let's just have a look this is where I normally muck it up because it's clearly not really dry and I shouldn't really touch it yeah it's still a bit tacky so I'll have to I think finish doing the cover um in a little while so yeah I hope that you have enjoyed what we have done and you've got an idea of how the cover's going to look um obviously it's now kind of fully stuffed now and um yeah once the cover's done it will be complete so I hope that you liked it and I hope that you had fun if you made a similar kind of item so thank you so much for watching and hopefully see you all again soon thanks then bye